Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready to tackle something new. New because now we understand what complex numbers are. And of course, complex numbers are not real numbers. They have an imaginary part. They do have a real part, but do have that imaginary part. So what if we have something like this? x squared plus x plus 3 equals 0. And they're asking us, for what values of x does the left side equal the right side? Now normally we get real answers for that, real numbers that are the answers, but in this case it will be a complex number or a set of complex numbers that are the answers. So in general when we have an equation that is like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then we can solve for x by using what we call the quadratic formula. And we'll show you more of that in some later videos in a new playlist, but here we just want to see how complex numbers come into play when there's really no real solution to that. And you'll see in just a moment why. So here we have an example where we have x squared plus x plus 3, so we have to recognize what is a, what is b, and what is c. In this case, a is the coefficient of x squared, so a equals 1. b is the coefficient of x, so b equals 1. And c is the constant, so c is equal to 3. So we'll plug those three values into our quadratic equation there, or quadratic formula. So we end up with x is equal to minus b, since b is 1, that gives us minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, since b is 1, that gives us 1 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is 3, and the whole thing divided by 2 times a, and a is 1. So let's simplify that and see what we get. So x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of, here we get 1 minus 12 divided by 2, or x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of a negative 11 over 2. And there's the trick. We have the square root of a negative number, which means that's imaginary. So that means that this is equal to minus 1 half plus or minus the or 1 half times the square root of minus 11. So now when I take that negative 11, I can write it like this. I can say this is equal to minus 1 half plus or minus 1 half times the square root of 11 times the square root of negative 1. And then I can say that x is equal to 1 half plus or minus 1 half times the square root of 11 times i. And notice I have a real part and an imaginary part. So essentially I have x is equal to 1 half plus 1 half times the square root of 11 times i or x is equal to 1 half minus 1 half times the square root of 11 times i. But in either case I have a real part and an imaginary part so I have two complex numbers as the answer to that particular question. Find the value for x that makes the left side equal to the right side. If we plug in these two values into our equation here, you will see that the left side will indeed equal 0, and you can try that. But at any rate, this is why we need complex numbers. We need complex numbers because sometimes the real numbers are not a solution to an equation, only complex numbers are the solution to an equation like this. That's why we need them.